Hey there, my friend, it's Trisha Carr. Real quick before we head into this episode, I just want to make sure that you know about Modern Mystic Life, a subscription service for spiritual mentoring and education. The monthly subscription is only $11.11 per month. We have regular support and inspiration delivered with the utmost ease right into your text messenger two to four times per week. You can use your mobile device or your desktop messenger to access the lessons and meditations, a monthly MP3 download of a produced meditation, at least once per month live meditation led by me. There is no account login and we have a monthly live class workshop. These are usually $35 for non-subscribers, so it is quite a deal. And the community is amazing. This is a way for you to support the Charmed Life podcast and also a way for us to be able to work more closely together. So do check out how you can subscribe in the show notes. I hope to see you there. Hello and welcome to the Charmed Life podcast. This podcast is all about magic, metaphysics, mysticism, and the unconditional love of the universe, and I am your host. My name is Trisha Carr. Okay, well, this is a welcome back, actually, because this is part two of my conversation with Christy Inge, Master Energy Healer and Human Design Coach. If you didn't hear part one, that's fine. You can listen to this one. There's so much that we go through. It's not like you have to hear the prequel before you can watch the this movie. You can listen to this episode, but I do encourage you to go back, if you haven't yet, and listen to part one because we had an amazing time exploring so many different topics about being a projector, about being a reflector, about being a five line, and so many things. So um, human design is, of course, your user manual for your um, operating system. It is how your aura, how your energy works, and that you will also find your purpose, your gifts. And it also encompasses really all of the possibilities and probabilities that you could be expressing on this planet, of course, with emphasis, emphases on certain ways that you function. And so in listening to anything or reading or, or, you know, consuming any education on human design, even if you don't actually, you're not that type, or you don't have that profile, you really will gain something because it is the science of differentiation. So as you hear what it's like for a five line, two things will happen. You will relate to it because you do have the potential of five energy in your chart. You may actually have five lines in that are in some of your planets, but then you will also be able to relate to it as a potential, even if you don't have it, you know, specifically on one of those planets And then you'll also be able to understand yourself by the differentiation from like understanding the contrast of something that someone else has as a definition in their profile or design. So anyway, that's uh, my little beginning of this part two episode with Christy Inge. Her last name is spelled I-N-G-E, so you can easily find her. But of course, check the show notes for direct links to her work, including that human design map that we talk about. Christy is a 5'2", that's her profile, splenic projector. Splenic is referring to her authority is her spleen. A master energy healer and human design coach, Christy makes human design and deconditioning simple and practical with empowering language and tools. Christy shows you how to heal the blocks to living in alignment with the highest potential of your human design. So here we go with part two of my conversation with Christy Inge, and I'll chat with you on the other side. This week, actually, someone was asking me, they were a um, self-projected projector, and their only channel was the 1-8. And they were saying, um, so like, does that mean that my work is creative? That I'm supposed to be creative in my work? Isn't everyone? I'm like, well, you're going to make a unique contribution with your creativity. And I think of particularly as it relates to that gate one is creativity is like, as my friend Leah says, creativity with a capital C. 
right? Mm -hmm. Not like creativity as in like creating your life as the divine, like (laughs) you are the creator. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and, and I said to her, literally, I said to her, like, you're going to be that even if you're in your, even if you're in prison, Mm -hmm. like it doesn't, it doesn't, it's your human design is not about your job. It's not about, Mm -hmm. at least from my perspective, it's not supposed to put you inside of a box. It's supposed to liberate you from the box. Mm-hmm. I have so many thoughts on this because I yeah. I think we probably resonate around this a lot. People are so, so, so hungry for purpose and meaning and wanting to know that they matter yeah. and wanting to know who they are in this wild and crazy spinning rock we call earth like and people and we and we're in a culture that doesn't like just sends people to like evangelical church to kind of take care of that part you know like yeah. we don't we don't really nurture that within people and we don't help people just like what I love about human design is that like I always think of human design as the door mm-hmm. and the door is the language, mm-hmm. right? It's the, it's the words, but it's just the door. Yeah. Right. So I'm a projector. So there's a door for me called projector, mm-hmm. but it's just the door. It's just the beginning. Yeah. But I think we're so like attached, so hungry for purpose and meaning and who am I? Like we're so, so, so hungry for that. Validation. What is yeah. a label? What is an outside authority yeah. that can validate me? And never, ever is there one. Yeah. We're ever trying to resolve the childhood experience of needing to be a part of the group, needing to be the same so that they, that we won't be rejected needing to have approval of the caregivers so that we don't die. We need to grow up. <laughs> yeah. And that, that brings me back to kind of circles back to this idea of like, where are we headed with this? Mm-hmm. And I think as it relates to human design as a system, like I love seeing people talk about human design, teach about human design from their actual perspective. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense what I'm saying? 100%. Yes. Like right. rather Instead than just like repeating something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like in really like, I love that. And I think that there's also because of the transition that's happening with 2027, where we are shifting out of tribal like the tribal energy being the background frequency we're we're changing into a frequency where it's all about individual empowerment. Mm-hmm. And pr- so I have um I have two collective channels and I have two individual channels. So energetically I hold a lot of energy around empowering individuals and empowering the collective. And I have no, I have hanging gates in tribal, but I have no tribal energy and kind of what I see happening. I would bet money that most of the people who fall into that fundamentalist kind of way of being with human design tribal is tribal energy. And there's, because like, if we take a step back and we look at what's happening just literally everywhere tribes are falling apart the right. way the tribal system has dominated it's clearly not working can you explain to the listeners exactly like th- what we mean by tribal because clearly if we're not thinking about if we haven't really understood it through the lens of human design it's like what do you mean i love my tribe you know what i mean like just the general yeah. word of tribe and the distinction even between tribal and collective but yeah, 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 yeah. Totally yeah. Mm-hmm. So in the human design chart, there are three circuit systems. And so a circuit is basically a, a, a flow of channels that 
the, the way I think about them, the way I teach about them is that our circuitry really shapes our values as a human being, really shapes what we believe is important and what we believe matters. And the three types of circuitry are individual, tribal, and collective. Anyone with individual circuitry and, and, you know, people can be a mix, you know, of all three, they can be just one, they can be like you, none. Just a bunch of yearning. Yeah. <laughs> a bunch of, uh, um, constant craving looking for the other side. Yeah. Um, which I think is a beautiful. Sure. All of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, Every, there's yeah. light and shade to all of it. There's yeah, challenge like, and gift to all of it. Yeah, like, totally. So the individual circuitry is that the value system that drives individual circuitry is to empower others. So anyone with individual circuitry, when they peel back, and this is what I tell people to be really, really, really conscious around who they were raised by and what their circuitry was, because the circuitry is like the value system that's under all of it. It's sort of like the the way I describe it in the course that I have on it is that like, it's the nerves of the chart. It's the way the energy yeah. is moving in the chart. And so you want to be aware of like, what was that like energetic imprint that you received around what your values should be? Mm-hmm. Because when we are, you know, like I was raised with people who have a lot of tribal circuitry, right? And so I was raised to believe family comes first. And right? you don't have any tribal circuitry. Isn't Literally that? none. I also That's have amazing. no fourth lines. You have um, no fourth lines? <laughs> See, I think that I, I just looked at, we just looked at a friend's chart. My other friend and I looked at a friend's chart today who's a 4 1, and he has no threes. Mm. And I was like, oh, well, I guess with the rarer profiles, that tends to happen, that there is a, de- a, a deficiency in some of the lines. That's how the rare ones happen. I, so yeah, but yeah that's no, fours. yeah, I'm mostly fives and twos. I have, I just have two fours and I like, Oh, I feel like I barely have any four energy. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know how to, I don't know how to be a friend or a networker. <laughs> yeah. It's not my, someone asked me, someone interviewed me about human design and they were like, how do we use human design to build community? And I was like, I don't know. And I don't, care. I'm not the one. <laughs> Don't know, and I don't care. I can tell you how to say a bunch of stuff, and then people will listen. Yeah, like, but I don't. I don't know. I can them. tell you how to build a soapbox. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know them, and yeah. it'd be better if I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> it works out better for us if I don't actually know them. Yeah, which is interesting. That's a five stuff. That's a five thing, y'all. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Mm-hmm. We have we have our own little language over here, yeah. impacting strangers. Yeah. So. Um, Yeah. So back to the circuitry. So the individual circuitry, like the easiest way to think about that is the value system that's sort of like under a person with individual, it's it's like under the surface and sort of simmering in the background is a value around empowering individuals. Yeah. What I also see in individual circuitry is that there tends to be this understanding of the ripple effect of empowerment, which is the way those three systems of circuitry work. So we have this, this, this underlying theme of empowered individuals. And then we have the tribal circuitry, which is all about, it's more, and this is what my personal take on what's happening in 2027. This is not the traditional take on what's happening. That's fine. I don't, I don't jibe with what Ra was. Yeah. He was making some shit up with that one. I mean, in my estimate, I value, I value (laughs) a lot of, I value other things that he taught much more than the piece in 2027. Take what you can use and leave the rest. Totally. Um, So that tribal circuitry is, I think the transition that's happening is that the tribal circuitry is all about valuing the survival of the tribe. And the tribe is smallish. It's not like the whole world. It's right. It's family um, identity, group identity. 
community group groups. like grouping. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So like if you're in a Facebook group for people who love bur- bullet journaling, you're in a tribe, a collect a, a smaller like labeled an a identity. Subset. Yes, yes, a subset. Mm-hmm. And so that value system for that tribal circuitry is the way I see it anyway is the transition that, that we're going through is that the tribe is going to essentially like have to become aware that it can only thrive. Like it's, it's moving from a value system around survival Mm -hmm. into thriving. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's a transition that's happening and we can see it happening um, in, on the collective level. and And I'll talk about that in a minute, but like, that it's the empowered individual mm-hmm. that creates a thriving tribe or, rather than a collective. Yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. the empowered thriving tribe hands that off to the collective. When we have masses of thriving empowered tribes, we have an empowered collective. Yeah. And it all begins with that empowered individual. And in 2027, and I can't remember the exact date numbers in that context are not like, I live in my own timeline over here. Like, (laughs) (laughs) like, you know, like I'm always asking my Alexa robot, like what day it is. Um, (laughs) But like, so it happens sometime in 2027 is that the background frequency is shifting into this this value system of empowered individuals. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, and I see it happening. Yes. It's chaotic. It's messy. It's hard, but all creativity is. Yeah. Um, and you know, chaos is order. And so what's, what's so fascinating with the pandemic you heard, I'm sure you heard, you know, everyone in lockdown, everyone had to start working at home. And then there was when everyone had, was supposed to start returning, there was this thing they called the big quit or the big resignation because mm. people were like, I'm not going back to my fucking job. I was miserable. I'm going to do something that mm-hmm, fulfills mm-hmm. me. This was, you know, breaking away from it helped them to see. And I'm like, that's 100%. a foreshadow of this, of this totally. frequency changing. Yeah. And if we look at like what's been happening for decades, mm-hmm. right? Like, we can we can see the transition happening like with the social justice movements that have been happening um all of it is our awareness is uh, and i don't know um have have you heard of and i don't know like i often joke that i know just enough about shit to get myself in trouble um <laughs> But like, have you heard of like indigo children and crystal children and that Mm -hmm. sort of realm of thinking about things and and like how we've had this wave of Mm -hmm. these children that have been coming in? Well, according to human design in 2027 and what's happening astrologically is that essentially if we look at it through that framework is that all children Mm -hmm. are being born. Brand right. new, different kinds of children. They're right. going to be eleven centered, right? The the solar plexus is going to split. Is that a part of the original prophecy, or is that an interpretation? I think that that's an interpretation. Um, I could like, be wrong about that. Like we're going to get. I, I I've been wondering, wanting to talk to someone about this very directly, who is an expert. Because, you know, like in 1781, is that what it is? When Uranus, when we discovered Uranus and projectors, when we became nine centered beings and then we Mm -hmm. got our projector type is, and I have, I don't think I've heard, I don't, I don't know. First of all, I feel like I downloaded it. And second of all, I think I heard someone else say, I'm not really positive. So I'm really fuzzy about this. Have you heard about this though? Is the solar plexus going to split and we're going to be No, no. Uh, My understanding is like what? mechanically is happening is that the channel 4919 is going away. Mm, It's going to stop being, well then, okay. So that has, that is maybe, is, are you, are, do you do jinkies at all? Are you into jinkies? I'm in love with jinkies. Okay. You are. That's right. I remember it's in all of your gates. 
So, because I have Gene Key 19, all the fucking place on my chart. <laughs> I have so much 19. And Richard Rudd's Gene Key's book, he says, he calls Gene Key 19 the future human. And is this why? Why does 19 to overtake 49? Are we going to, how does it go away? Yeah. See, like, this is the part where I haven't been all the way down the rabbit the hole. Okay. Like, um, cause I'm actually really curious about, um, I actually want to talk to John at genetic matrix about it. Um, or someone because mm-hmm. I'm really curious about, like, I don't know how it could possibly go away. I don't. Yeah. Like it, that, that, that doesn't, that it doesn't like, Unless we do have an extra center or some, or either lose a center or gain a center or two. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't like, it doesn't make sense to me. And I, I did read Karen Curry Parker's book. I'll have to revisit that. Have you I read, read her, her book? book about- I did. And it's, it's very, it's very open-ended, which I appreciate because she's not trying to, you know, create too many details about something that we can't possibly know. It's more right. just feeling and energetic. And so I appreciate it, but it isn't detailed in that sense. I don't think, and maybe, maybe she did mention the solar plexus and that is part of where I got that. So I should reread it apparently. (laughs) Yeah. I'll reread it as well. You can just Um, read that portion of it. It's toward the end of the book. Yeah. I definitely haven't heard anything about it splitting. Okay. I do have some thoughts about the going from seven to nine. Um, and the split that happened there. One of the things that um, comes up a lot is, or that I talk about a lot, is that the centers are symbolic. Mm -hmm. And they are symbolic of... Well, it's not like your physical spleen is the thing that's doing the thing. Right. Yeah. So so the way that I think about the centers is that they are sort of like hubs that regulate sort of packs, categories. Like they're high, they help us to relate to what I think of it as dimensions of us, you know what I mean? Like to electro and magnetically manage the energy with the Yeah, and the energy on a very practical level in a way that people can, cause like people ask me this all the time, like, what do you mean when you say energy? Mm-hmm. And I use that term to mean a lot of different things. But in this context, when we're talking about the nine centers, I think about the nine centers as producing the chain of thought, feeling, and action. And so the spleen produces a specific type of thought, feeling, and action. Yeah. The root, um, like I had one of my map clients recently say, oh, it's just my thoughts. It's not my root. And I'm like, but it's the, like the root is symbolic of that kind of thinking. Mm-hmm. The root is symbolic of, I need to grow. I need to evolve. I need to push forward um, momentum. So when you're thinking those kinds of thoughts, that's the root center. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Totally. Yes. Uh And so from my perspective, the solar plexus became solar plexus and spleen. Mm -hmm. The heart became the heart and the will. Mm -hmm. And if we, and I, and G and identity. Yeah. So some, so it's, it's technically called the will center. Some people call it the heart center. The heart um, will. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So the it heart. Became, it didn't, it, did it become the heart become the, the will center and the G center? Yes. Or, okay. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was so, saying. so solar plexus split into two. Right. Solar plexus and spleen, the heart center. So we're talking about the chakra, the right. heart chakra became the G center and the will center. Mm-hmm. And the way I see it, and, and, if, and if we take a step back and we look at it, if we think about the spleen and the spleen's role, the spleen's role is to keep us safe and healthy and alive. Mm-hmm. And so in neuroscience, in the in brain science, 
the spleen is the amygdala. Right. It's the, it's the part that's keeping us safe. And that split, and if you notice culturally what's happening is that now we're starting to have awareness that we have higher emotions and lower emotions. Mm -hmm. The solar plexus is the higher emotions and the spleen is the lower emotions. Fight, flight, trauma response, fight, flight. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh And so the split is the consciousness that those two energies work in different ways. Does that Mm -hmm. make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the heart center, it creates an awareness and this actually goes and it's, it's so funny how we started talking about paradox and how we're <laughs> we're like looking at all these different paradoxes because yeah. like right we can see that and the reason I said I don't really love using this higher lower language is because you know the solar plexus has a full spectrum of vibration and frequency and so does the spleen mm-hmm. right it's yeah, just the course. awareness Mm -hmm. That like we have a primitive brain that reacts. And then we also have this prefrontal cortex that creates a whole different set of basically hormones in our body, chemicals in our body. You know, and the prefrontal cortex may actually resonate with some of the higher, if we will, frequencies of the spleen because... With people who have a smaller prefrontal cortex are wanting to feel the edge of survival. Yes, and that's that's the that's literally the exact the exact point I'm making. Mm-hmm. And they're like here, it, they, exactly they're opposite one another. That's it's, I never it's thought about that. It's the awareness that mm-hmm. like it's it's the awareness that there's two things happening. Yeah, at the same time, mm-hmm. the same with the the heart center becoming the G center. And the will center. So the will center, sometimes called the heart center or the ego center, is, and I use the term ego to mean being identified with being a human. Mm -hmm. Like understanding that you are a human being. Mm -hmm. And then the G center It's the awareness that you are a divine being Mm -hmm. in the heart center. Both of those things live in the heart, in the chakra Mm -hmm. system. Does that make sense what I'm saying? And so now we're developing the awareness that we have that like Jesus, Mm -hmm. we are both human and divine. And that's the split that happened there. And so if there's a split, it's uh probably something like that, where we're, we're right. just developing new awareness. So I just want to relate this to the brain. Cause I feel like the will center is more like the left hemisphere of the brain. Totally. The G center is the right hemisphere yes. of the brain. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then we have the corpus callosum that are harmonizing and connecting them. And we need both. Totally. Um, totally. Now I'm getting chills. <laughs> yeah. 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 And uh-huh. so whatever I have chills too. So like whatever this thing is that's happening in 2027, mm-hmm. to me, it's most helpful to think about it is we're just gaining new awareness and no one knows what we'll do with that awareness. Right. So, Cause like right now we're yeah. seeing a lot of like the tribe. And I think this is what, this is super hardcore happening in the human design space, just like it is everywhere else is like the tribe is fighting back. The tribe doesn't want to lose. Politics is getting louder because my side Mm -hmm. and this side, they're getting Mm -hmm. more polarized. Mm -hmm. And that's just Mm -hmm. one example, but yes, exactly. It's when there is, I mean, this happens in, in us internally, like when you're, when you are dismantling or dematerializing, killing an outdated belief, it fights back. It's totally. because it's literally made of survival energy. Your beliefs right. are made of the energy of I need to survive. And so if right. you try to kill it, it tries to survive and it will. Right. And it makes you stronger as and it makes you, it, it deepens your awareness about whatever it is. And so it's, it's, a, it's a necessary process. The Democrats and the Republicans getting louder about what's important to them. Even, I mean, if we can somehow <laughs> take away the idea that maybe some of them are actually principled and there are principles there and not, it's not just about, you know, money, <laughs> greed, and just saying some shit. 
that's my that's my truth. That's that's clearly what I think it is. But anyway, then we then we have to hear the voices. You know, we have to hear the principles in order for them for it to be sifted. Oh, and this is reminding me of oh, I was like this is reminding me of something in the gene case, and it is gene key nineteen. Mm-hmm. Gene key nineteen. The the um, shadow is codependency. The mm-hmm. gift is independence. Mm. And the city is um, sacrifice, but I actually like how he reframes sacrifice. He says it's interdependence. Right. And so codependency is giving up your own identity. And that's kind of like what is the shadow side of the tribe, giving up your own identity so that something else can be lifted up. Independence is the individual wave. It is self-empowerment so that you can become interdependent. The sacrifice piece of it that Richard says is because it's like sacrificing lower parts of yourself that are not most valuable for the greater good for everyone and for your own personal empowerment, just like in a relationship. You give up selfish things so that you can experience the wonders of the relationship. Um, So that that makes sense now why at least that piece of it with with the future human of Gene Key 19. Yeah. So that's what we're moving through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and we're moving through, and it's so clear when you step back and look at it, is we are we are in the if we think about the three phases of transformation, there's the initiation, then there's the chaotic middle, and then there's mm-hmm. the promised land. We're in that chaotic middle yeah. of releasing all of that. Um essentially codependency, Mm -hmm. that survival sort of value system around survival and um, like that tribal energy is very, I did something for you. Now, what are you going to do for me? It's very Mm -hmm. like an eye for Mm -hmm. an eye, like, and we are transitioning out of that into definitely more interdependence. Mm -hmm. where, because one of the things that I have witnessed and I, I've seen this a lot, particularly in the life coaching space, um, is this, this like idea that you can somehow be completely independent and like, it's not, that's, that's, that's not correct. Right. Like, Mm -hmm. like it's not possible. Yeah. I'm like, oh, so you want to be completely independent. Awesome. Can you tell me how you're going to build roads? Where's your money going to come from? Because you don't make money in your house. Right. Like what, like, (laughs) I mean, you you know, like great and grow your own land, but then you're still, but then eat like, so I, um, my husband and I are obsessed with this, this couple that lives in Alaska on like a off grid, they live like in an off grid cabin and they do this, like their videos have sort of like an ASMR sort of quality to them. They're very relaxing. They always have gorgeous imagery, imagery, music. And one of the things that you'll notice right away is that, yeah, they live off grid, but they're not completely independent, right? Well, if, they're like, making, if you can see videos of them, then they're not exactly, exactly. completely off grid. You know, right. somehow and they get also, on grid. And then also, like, you can see on their counter the olive oil that they got from Costco. <laughs> they did. They printed. They blew the glass. Yeah, like, and what? They printed- <laughs> <laughs> like, and, and just to be clear, they don't, yeah. they're not, like. It's not like they're frauds. Yeah, Yeah, they're 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 very like um, they're very open about you know that kind of thing. But even like if we think about like a recluse who like Mm -hmm. moves to the middle of nowhere to live in this cabin that they built out of wood, they chop down they chop down the trees. Like they're like sneaking into town, stealing shit from people to live. (laughs) Right, like. Mm And I don't say that in like a, in a judgmental way, but the point is that like, even when you want to be a recluse hermit, which my five, two, I want to run to the Himalayas often, (laughs) I get it. Is that, is that even then we're not completely independent. 
Mm-hmm. And what we're working towards, to, to me anyway, is, and I think the fifth line, the, the, the healing work of the fifth line is so beautifully potent in this area. And I think all fifth lines have so much to teach us about this is because we carry all of that energy, even if it's not in our chart, we carry, we carry that human story of how we show up in service to other people. And part of that story is making, and the fifth line, this is what I was going to, this is the point I was going to make before and we rabbit hole tangented somewhere else. I don't remember. Um, but is, is that like the way I think about it is that like karmically, so I'm a fifth line, you're a fifth line we made some sort of soul level agreement yeah. that like, this is the karma I'm going to focus on this time. Yeah. And I'm going to get really good at this karma that at this. And to me, karma is just the patterns of thinking. It's, it's yeah. the habitual ways that we and think, feel and do. And what we want to learn from it, how we want to expand from it. You know, yes, that would be and the how we trans- then. Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. And so part of the fifth line, the, the the beauty of the fifth line is that that's one of the most important things we can do is to make the discernment between what is mine and what is theirs. And that's an essential part of unraveling that codependent and and transforming it into more interdependence because when I know it's mine and I don't take responsibility for what is yours and I don't take on the identities that you give me, right? When I am- Positive or negative. Exactly. Mm-hmm. When I am, when I'm clear that the, the way I experience it, I'll be, I'm really curious if you experience it the same way, is that like when I make that distinction- and I'm not even talking about like a, a conscious mm-hmm. process, right? I mean, sometimes it's conscious and sometimes it has to be very conscious. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> is that like, there's this quality of like the, it's like they threw the ball and then it bounced off the back backboard and went back to them. And depending on their capacity, they can take the ball or not. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But that clarity is that, that ability to sort of hand it back, to, to give it back Mm -hmm. and to let people own their shit. Yeah. And when that happens, there's no more codependency. Yes. Like, yes, I can feel that. There can't be. And we will be right back. Hi friend, it's Trisha Carr with an invitation for you. If you are ready to accelerate your ascension and connect to the swift flow of your life mission mind body ascension acceleration coaching all of my clinical training my experience from teaching and providing countless sessions and classes one-on-one group coaching healing reading teaching channeling as well as my calibration as a human design reflector i'm offering all of this to you to step up your entire life to accelerate your ascension walk If you've had a single session with me, if you've had coaching, or if you've experienced transformation from any of my offerings, my classes, podcasts, videos, well, this is an accelerated and exponentially charged. This is what my soul has prepared for an eternity and up to now. And if you hear this call, then this is also co-created with your soul. Your life is meant to be joy first and a service as a close and integrated second. This coaching is especially tuned for high achievers who want to accelerate their progress on their life mission and create mind, body, well-being and higher attunement. Submit to work with me in this powerful container, this premium coaching. If you feel the call, you can do it. I guide, you take action. I hold the resonant projection field, channel your steps, and you take action. The first action step is to fill out an application, the link to which you will find in the description. Be prepared, be ready to upgrade your mind, body ascension, and your connection and flow with your spiritual mission. And now back to the show. 
as the f- the five line, and I told you before we started. I think I don't think I said it on the recording that I, the last couple of weeks, I've been deconditioning the five line for myself and just like being blown away with because it's me. I'm like being blown away with myself. That's not narcissistic. It's not arrogant. It's like we all are enamored with ourselves. We are just pulled away from ourselves with our conditioning. And I had a couple of events. I had three events actually that stimulated this deconditioning and just gave me an opportunity to see the projection and to experience my role while receiving projections. And like when you're talking about the ball, throwing it back and forth, I guess there was, okay, I'm going to describe one of the events, which was so funny. Let's just say it was a work event where there was a lot of networking and, you know, socializing. Some of these people, you know, we hadn't either I maybe never met them in person because it was over the pandemic and it was on Zoom. And some of them I did meet before, but it's so long ago and, you know, various levels of familiarity with one another. And those the people, <laughs> two things happened. One of two things happened. Um, I would say someone would come up to me and they'd say, hi, I'm Susan. That was not the name of anyone there. That's why I'm using the name. Hi, hi, I'm Susan. I'm like, hi, Susan, I'm Trisha. And it, maybe we had met before or not and or and she would go oh trisha carr and so she she didn't recognize me by looking at me which is a thing that happens with the five like looking right through them and then she would say oh trisha carr mm. so that was one piece or someone would who they didn't recognize me even though we did know each other and they would say oh trisha carr and then someone else who we did know each other really well and I'd be like, hi, Lisa. And she'd go, Trisha Carr. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, oh, the name of my projection field is Trisha Carr. It's my mm-hmm. full name. And but I and then I realized that it helped me to get clarity that and I want to be Trisha. You know, I want to be a first name basis with you because that's my human, my humanity. And so letting them keep their projection and how it feels good to, I don't want to take that away either. That's the reason why we're told as kids never reject a compliment because it feels good to the compliment giver, not because it's, you know, but at the same time, I'm still going to maintain that I am human. I am me. And so, you know, if I get in certain situations, like because I have a podcast and people who have been watching the podcast, they'll have a moment of going like, oh my gosh, I just really love you, blah, blah, blah. It's not really about me. It's what they are experiencing as I'm having conversations. You know what I mean? And I don't reject it. I also don't get impressed by it. I just stand there in it and say, that's so sweet. And I affirm their role in it somehow. So I just realized. And so I got some clarity about how to be a human. And and while I'm maintaining my humanness and not rejecting their projection, because that's about them, not me, but I have a role in it somehow. It's still we're at the paradox again. Yeah. So um, I have so many thoughts right now. <laughs> the first is that apparently I was having a premonition this morning, <laughs> um, which I'm still, so that happens. Mm-hmm, um, yeah, and I'm still, absolutely. I'm very like, um, when it comes to my intuition, that's an area where it's like, I don't even know what to do with that. But for this conversation, I was literally this morning thinking about, I went to this conference. This was many, many years ago. This was before I knew anything about human design. We're talking probably 15 years ago. It was the first time that I went to an event. So I started blogging. That was Mm -hmm. how I got started. I just was blogging about my personal about my personal experience and my blog like skyrocketed overnight. Like, and this was like the OG, like when Mm -hmm. blogging was like the thing you did on the internet. Like, (laughs) um, and I remember like within like a couple months I was getting like 40,000 views a month on my blog. And that blew my mind that like 40,000 now it's, now it's crazy. Um, I can't even, I can't even wrap my brain around how many people read my blog now, but like my blog just like exploded. And so I went to a conference in this blogging niche Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and people were literally treating me like I was a celebrity. Yeah. And exactly. I was like, what yeah. the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah. I do not know what to, like, I was so uncomfortable. Like, I did not know what to do with that. Yeah. Like, had no idea. And it's it was happening, like, repeatedly. And it's and weird. It's I feel crazy. like the sea. The five line also, maybe, I don't know. I don't, it doesn't really, I don't crave it. It doesn't validate me. It's, you know what I mean? Like it's a. No, like most five lines have a like, it's like, oh, mm, 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 what? Like. It's it's just, but it is a tool, you know? Yeah, for sure. And so I, I understand it and, but it does feel weird because people, well, like I was telling my friend about because she has she's uh what is she she's a four six and she just has like she's very little five she's like a five in her vocation so when she gets projection it makes her feel really weird and I'm like well yeah it always feels weird (laughs) even if it's like your whole deal yeah yeah it is Mm -hmm. weird is a really good word it's surreal it's a surreal and I've told her about how the story were this person that I know really well I'm not going to mention who it is I know them really well but they started to watch my YouTube or something like that. And, you know, maybe I did animal communication or some session for them, just something small. And they, they were talking to me and they were like, I just appreciate your, the work that you're doing so much and then of all that kind of stuff. And then, she, and then they said, and you're a real person. And I'm like, said it to my stupid face. I'm like, yeah, I'm a person. <laughs> it was a weird thing to say to a person. Isn't that weird? To say it is this weird. <laughs> like, it's like. I'm here. Like, that's something you say to someone else about someone else. But you're you're saying. And I just, I remember, again, it just feels really awkward, this moment of being objectified. I mm-hmm. mean, and it was lovely. You know what I mean? There's no, It's a positive projection. But it's just, it's it's not me. A projection isn't you. Right. And yet it's your job to utilize it. Yeah. So I don't know. So if you're. If you're just starting to, to, and maybe I misinterpreted, do you feel like you're just starting to start to unwind the stuff around the fifth line? I feel like I'm just in a deep, a part of the spiral where I'm, re- where I'm really unwinding it and re- and really recapitulating yeah. some things. I've done some of it, you know, but I'm in a deep part of a spiral. Yeah. So I'll tell you um, about an experience that I had that um I'm sure you've had this kind of experience. If you haven't, I will be shocked. So when we are able to do that, Mm -hmm. to to be in that space where we can say, oh, that is them, Mm -hmm. right? Like that is their, that is them. They are projecting that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we can be super, super, super clear in that, in what belongs to us and what does not. There's a really beautiful healing magic that happens. And I have a story that um, really demonstrates it. So this was probably, this was when, um, this might've even been the straw Um, but this was right before I handed off my business email box to my assistant, Emily. Mm -hmm. And I received an email that said, you know, you could be in the ranks of people like Eckhart Tolle and Matt Kahn and Gabrielle Bernstein and like listing off this like 20 people, these like spiritual people that I could be like them if I would just stop cussing. <laughs> That's what you asked me before we started. Can we cuss? <laughs> I had Matt Kahn on the program, by the way. He cussed. So in your face, whoever that is. <laughs> so I wrote back to them. Oh, my gosh. And I said, so that sounds like um, you That's a you thing. Yeah, (laughs) basically, that's what I said. (laughs) And they came back to me with like 12 paragraphs 
about what a terrible, awful person I was. And clearly I was projecting onto them and I needed to take that elsewhere. And I mean, it was like, whoa. Wow. And I was like, that is so there. Like in my energy, in my field, there was zero part of me that had any inclination that that was about me. (laughs) Of course. So I deleted the email, Mm -hmm. went about my life, unsubscribed them from Mm -hmm. my email Mm -hmm. list. Yeah. Went about my life. A week later, I get an email from the same person telling me that I transformed their life (laughs) and healed them spiritually because they did deep shadow integration work around people cussing and it completely changed their life. But not before he gave you 12 or she, they gave you 12 paragraphs of and here's here's anger. here's the beautiful part of the right totally and here's but here's the beautiful thing is that there are going to be people who when you throw the ball back who and when i say throw the ball back i mean your own awareness that is that's theirs when you throw the ball back yeah. there're going to be people who can't catch it right so in that yeah. first reply to me she couldn't catch it mm-hmm. but but because there was no part of me that was taking ownership of it, mm-hmm. she was actually able to take it back, right? And that's the thing yeah. that people people um, with fifth lines feel, oh, my God, it's a curse to be a fifth line. But actually, um, it's actually really, really beautifully, there's so much healing potential in owning what is yours and letting letting people have their projections, whether it's a negative projection or a positive one, like letting them have that is healing for them. And when we take on projections that are not ours, we are literally stealing the opportunity for someone to heal. Yes. It's Mm -hmm. like spoiling the child. And I don't mean because they're lesser than us, but the concept of if you spoil your child, you're, you're robbing from them the lessons of how life really is. Yeah. 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 And it's really beautiful to watch that happen, to watch. And I've seen it, you know, in so many different situations where, because that for me, the fifth line, remember when I said it was like, it was the thing that like Mm -hmm. changed my entire perspective was because I started experimenting with the idea that anything anyone ever says to me or about me is about them. Mm -hmm. And I learned discernment really, really, really quickly that way. And of course there were times where like, oh no, I got some shit here to be doing myself, you know, like, (laughs) um, but like, as I got better and better and better and better at that and like not taking that on and not taking it on and and not for me, like so much of it was like taking it on in my identity, like, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. um, and just, just watching the people that actually do have the capacity, right. To take the ball back and what Mm -hmm. happens when they do, it's so beautiful it's so beautiful to watch it. And I've had that affirmed repeatedly and it's still, um, I actually recently within, like when I say recently, I mean like less than a month conversation have, um, having a conversation with, with my coach about like, it's always about the fifth line. The conversations are always about the fifth line. Um, but having a conversation with her about how I am now becoming aware that like, I don't have to work so hard at that discernment and I don't want to work so hard at it. Do you know what I mean? I I do. I feel like sometimes if I'm trying to work hard on the discernment, I'm just getting lost in my mind 
and that actually the body will kind of just, I mean, maybe the body has to process things, you know, process the weirdness and that everything else. But essentially, sometimes there's no response. Sometimes there's just holding a response. Sometimes there is a response. But if I'm spending too much time on, I think the ancillary things, like the worrying about whether someone was hurt or worrying about, you know, that kind of yes. stuff. Yes. That's me I trying do to do their work. That's my yeah. codependency. I'm trying to totally. do their energy work. And it's hundred percent. And I, I feel better if I can, like you're saying, it's, it's not my work to whether they can hold the ball or not. Exactly. Like, like that's not my, like, it, like, because I think it, particularly if we think about this through the lens of like codependency, mm-hmm. I think for me and my patterns was like, I, and I, I would say that this is probably because of my undefined solar plexus is that, um, I have taken on the responsibility of trying to transform other people's emotions for them. Cause you, cause you don't want them to come at, you don't want to feel the confrontation. Of, exactly. Oh, you just exactly. don't want to feel the negative ones that you're definitely yeah, exactly. going to be amplifying. Totally, I know. Totally. Totally. And letting them, um, like, and, 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 realizing that it actually is not serving anyone Mm -hmm. when I, when I try to do that, even if it looks like on the outside, they think I'm the spawn of Satan because of it. (laughs) Like, (laughs) you know, like Uh even if like they don't, they don't like that I threw the ball back, even if they don't consciously like it's still not it's still not mine. That's such a great story. Thank you for sharing that and thank you to the person who did do her work then. Yeah. I love was, that. Yeah, it was amazing. Like And then came back and shared it with you. There's so much yeah. that she did. And you know, in a sense you can sometimes I mean for me I will let I'll make my mind stand down because I'll be like, "You know what?" I, I'm in relationships with people, whether it, they're close or tangential or just even like, you know, by the projection field, I'm in relationships mostly with people who were wanting to do their work. So then- Yes, thank goodness. Clock out. It's not your business anyway. And uh, just, you know, get present. Um, I have, so one little cute story. When mm-hmm. I was in high school, my nephew, who was I think about seven or eight at the time, Okay, I I played Sandy in Greece, you know, like mm. wow, mm-hmm. you know, singing and dancing, you know, lipstick and everything. And so my little nephew, who I know really well, obviously, I mean, we have a big age gap, but we know each other really well. We're family, big deal. And after the play was over, and I came down and you know to chat with my family, my nephew was like super fanboyed out. He was like, oh my god, oh my god, it's her. and he couldn't look at me in the eye. He was shy, and I'm like, what are you? doing but he transformed me into the projection field and it was like he was talking to some big celebrity this is my friggin nephew this is a person i know is my blood <laughs> it's weird right yeah it is weird like um and i think for me with the five two obviously i don't know what it's like in a five one experience because all i have is the five two experience but so like because i also get the other side the Mm -hmm. other side the the example of the two the example I like to use here is like the projection of the second line is like you invite someone over for brunch you make them eggs they come to you and they're like these are the best eggs I've ever had in my entire life (laughs) <laughs> you should propose an article to Bon Appetit and you should definitely have a YouTube channel and you should go on the Food Network because everyone needs to know about your scrambled eggs. And you're, you're like, like, they're for me. They're my but eggs. I'm just making <laughs> breakfast. Like, I don't want a YouTube channel. Like, and so that... Per- so that's the con- the 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 projection of the fifth line is more of it's the the are you familiar with um uh, it's it's called different things in different circles 
Sometimes it's called the drama triangle. Sometimes it's called the victim triangle Mm -mm, of the victim, villain, and the savior. It's the the drama triangle. Um, That's the projection of the fifth line is that Mm -hmm. people are projecting that you're either the victim, the villain, or the savior. And it usually and starts with the savior. It starts with the savior. Always. Usually. Almost always. I mean, let's right. and, and then. <laughs> and and so so they build this sort of savior. Mm-hmm. Like I always joke that Jesus must have been a fifth line. Five, like, for sure. Like, yeah. <laughs> And my friend and I were talking about whether he was a 5'1 or a 5'2. And I was mm. like, well, I think maybe he was a 5'1 because he studied the law mm. for, and he studied carpentry for, uh, you know, for 30 years before he started his mission. But he learned, and that's why the Pharisees and Sadducees were so pissed at the teachers of the day, because they knew he knew the law and he was an Mm. expert and he had investigated the law, but he didn't want to teach that shit. He's like, no, look at the mustard seed. (laughs) That's what he Mm. wanted to teach. Mm. Anyway, but I could see the hermit. And my friend was like, maybe it was a hermit though, because he would go in the desert. And he's like, my friends, will you please just let me sleep? And I was like, yeah, I can see that too. But Yeah. So with the lines, Mm -hmm. each line actually brings the wisdom of the line Mm -hmm. before it Mm -hmm. or technically everything before it. But Mm -hmm. like the way the second line works as far as like studying and learning is the second line has all these, they can make eggs beautifully. Right. And they didn't have to learn how, but what happens with that second line is that we can be drawn like once, because the second line and the reason that the five, two specifically their work is to know their calling is because that second line gets called out, right? Yeah. You make amazing right. eggs. You should have a YouTube channel, right? They get mm-hmm. called out of their, their hermitage. Uh, yes. Their hermitage. Mm-hmm. And what can happen is that once the, the second line themselves recognize that they have natural gifts, they may want, so like maybe Jesus was a natural carpenter. Maybe he had natural, you know, we don't know, but like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that, the, the point I'm trying to make is that the second line does like to enhance whatever comes natural to yeah. them. If it is a correct projection, right? But back to the savior thing is that what happens is typically it's not always, um, but typically it is like there's this projection that comes from an inner expectation that you can save the day, Mm -hmm. that you will save the day somehow, that you will be the hero, that you will be the savior. And then if that expectation is not met, then that's when the projection starts to to shift into mm-hmm. well now you're the problem because you didn't save the day right um totally. which is super fun um <laughs> right like when you realize cuz like that's one of the things for me it's like i tried so hard to 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 meet expectations because like I was just told, you know, so many times I was just told, like, this is who you are. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And. Well, and all the feedback from from the projection field when you don't know that that's what it is. And you're like, oh, oh, okay, do it this way. Oh, oh, don't do it this way. Oh, do things, you know. And we're always like, we get this nervousness and there's. Totally. a lot of nervousness and paranoia with the fifth line. And if you don't know what's going on, then that's why, because there's so much feedback and we're trying to like match it somehow. And there's a lot of conflicting projections Mm -hmm. and a lot Mm -hmm. of confusion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Mm -hmm. someone looks right in your face and that's met you a million times too. And then it's like, doesn't recognize you. Like it, that's, it's weird or picks you out of a crowd. They know exactly who you are. There's a lot of weird stuff. Yeah. One of the things, um, my coach and I actually recently had this conversation because she is a two, four, Mm-hmm. Oh, I have a two four um, colleague, and she was just telling me that two fours and five ones like are a really great resonant match. So hmm. maybe the two, maybe with the five, anyway, five two, but still, anyway, yeah. Yeah. So we have people in common, mm-hmm. she and I, mm-hmm. and she was telling me about how, and, and one of the people is like an energy healer type person who's quite full of herself, if I do say so myself. 
And she said to my coach, like, I don't understand why I can't read your energy. And my Hmm. coach said to the person, because I don't want you to. It's not your business. I'm the coach. (laughs) And so um, that kind of blew my mind. Mm -hmm. I was like, what? Like, that's a thing? (laughs) You can just not have people read your energy? Well, they're not necessarily reading your energy either as a five fucking true story. So, um, so that opened up this whole conversation about, and we started talking about grocery shopping Mm -hmm. and we started Mm -hmm. talking about her experience versus my experience, grocery shopping. And literally when I go to the grocery store, it's like a celebrity has walked in (laughs) like literally people just, and I'm just like, what do you wear hats and I things do. like that? Yeah. Sunglasses, uh-huh. like. Yeah. Um, and some five people say they'll wear like shirts with words on them to help to at least start the projection the way they want it. So like a word that's like, believe in yourself. And then it's almost like also putting it back to them right away. But yeah. So I've actually been playing with, um, I call it no access time. And so mm-hmm. I build into my daily life now that people do not have access to my energy at this yeah. time. And that has been an incredibly transformative experience for me. And it's wild. The first time I did it in the grocery store, people were literally bumping into me. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I think I turned that up a little too <laughs> high. <laughs> yeah. I, like, oh. I'm still material. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally, people were bumping into me. And that literally never happens. Like, I'm in Target. And literally, it's like the it's like the crowd, like, parts for me to walk through. It's wild. It's wild. You're Moses. Yes, apparently. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just trying yeah, to buy I'm just Maxi Jesus. <laughs> I'm just Jesus. I'm not Moses, too. Right. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Christy, I feel like I have taken so much of your time and I'm I oh, could we so could be fun. on the, it's been so fun. And I and I'm like immediately when we started, I was like, I wish we were neighbors. <laughs> we live in different states. We not live that across not, the country, I'm pretty I, sure. You're in California, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're in Virginia. Virginia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Well, tell everyone about the human design map and all other ways that they can work with you. Um, what are the different things that you are doing? How can people work with you? Obviously, they can get a, that beautiful resource that is your newsletter and your blog, which is like yes, way over the top of um, benevolent service for free. But I would love for people to also work with you. <laughs> yeah. So the only way to work with me is actually to buy a map. Oh, it is. Um, okay. Yeah. That's, that's so it's wonderful. the only thing. That it's I so sell. valuable. It's so highly yeah. valuable. Do it, do it, do it. Everyone yeah. who's so the thing about the about human design is everyone when they get initiated, they're like, I want to learn everything. How do I learn it? What class? But you gotta experiment. You gotta but to have a resource of to pick new things to experiment with, like your map, that's gold. Y- yes. And the thing that is um very distinct about what I do with the map that it's very distinct is mm-hmm. that the map also comes with, it's called the portal. And then inside the portal is the deconditioning toolbox. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, my signature process based on alchemical magic of transforming from one state to another. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's unlimited Q and a, um, and so I'm very passionate. I don't know why that word keeps coming up, but passionate Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. it's very important to me that because one of the things that I think is a common, 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 common experience in human design is it's like, well, get a reading or buy a report or, you know, like the things that you can do to understand the parts of your human design. And then it's like, you get this like fire hose of information Mm -hmm. and then you're like left yeah, with like, and now what? Like, 
And so I, um, so like once the map is delivered, there's like an integration course to help you, you so like walks you through how I recommend Mm -hmm. integrating, which I do a process called low hanging fruit. I think we should all start with low hanging fruit. Like it said that you should start with strategy and authority. And I don't agree. I think you should start with the low hanging fruit, like start anywhere that feels easy to you. Um, and so I guide people through the process of like, okay, so now I have, cause the map is everyone's map is at least a hundred pages, most mm-hmm. of them more than that. So it's a lot of information, yeah. right? It's a lot of information. All and about st- you. That's yeah. what's amazing specifically. That's brilliant. Yeah. And people tell me all the time that it's very like affirmative, mm-hmm. um, which I love hearing of course, but then like. Yeah, it's really important to me that it's like it's not just like a fire hose of information because I can be a fire hose. I think you've probably discerned that at this point, but like I'm not just a fire hose, right? Mm -hmm. I want to help you actually do something with it. Like I don't, I don't want like I make the joke like I don't want that PDF file just rotting on your hard drive. Like, (laughs) yeah. Like I want you out there experimenting and I want to help you with that. I can help you with that. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, um, and I'm really good at like, you know, I'm a fifth line. So like, I'm very, (laughs) I'm very practical problem solution oriented. And that's really, um, yeah, it's really important to me that people don't just feel like, oh my God, I've got all this information now. What? Like, right. Yeah. So people, you know, can go as deep down the rabbit hole with me as they want. That's so great. And I'm, I admire so much how you have in, in a, at least a broad sense, streamlined your, how you serve. Oh my God. I cannot tell you how much that, that alone has changed my life. Yeah. Like it's like, I, I don't think we were recording but I was talking about how I'm very conscious about where I focus my mental energy Uh totally changed my mental energy to just, I do this one thing. Yeah. That's so great. Yeah. So everyone get your map wherever you are in your experiment. Yes. This tool. Amazing. So amazing. And I have people that it's clients, students, and they're like so super excited and they're like what class do i take and i'm like i really i don't know <laughs> because i don't mm. know if you should take a class um i'm not going to tell you not to but cuz you it's about experimenting and a class can be just that fire hose and then you got this big thing this is something that you can continue to unpack and go back to and I, the low hanging fruit tip is fantastic i think that is through your entire experiment, where's the low hanging fruit? Is it my conscious sun? Is it my unconscious mercury? Is it this channel? Um, yeah. So yeah, totally. And, and, and that's one of the things that I say in that integration course is that like part of what's happening is as we're deconditioning, we're actually building nervous system capacity Mm -hmm. for people to not like us anymore. (laughs) The people like, that we've currently <laughs> created the life around. with our people pleasing. Yes. Like mm-hmm. they're not going to like it and we have to handle that, right? Yeah. Like that's part of it. And but like- But guess what? You get to like you more. Yes. Because you got to live with you the rest of your life. Yeah. Like, yeah. and so is it's like the low hanging fruit, your capacity for low hanging fruit actually expands. Right. Like Mm -hmm. what's easy to me today, right. After years of deconditioning and shadow integration work is completely different. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and we do hit the point of blocks, blocks. And I put that in quotes and that's where the deconditioning toolbox comes in. Is it, that's what it guides you through is like when it gets to a point where it starts to feel like I've done all the easy stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's it's always about expanding that capacity. And I'd be curious to know if as a reflector, this is part of your experience too. But for me, a lot of my experience as a projector has been just letting shit be easy. 
I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> Seriously, I don't want to go off on another tangent. I was just talking to my friend, Splenic Projector, who's starting a project where she actually has to write a lot of scripts, yoga nidra scripts for human design and, you mm. know, mm. and yeah, for, you know, get, helping people to be attuned to d- different design, to their design. And um, she that was like- amazing. I know, right? Um, I will definitely. She's going to be on the podcast soon. My friend's name is Hillary Jackendoff. Mm. And uh, like on Instagram, she's the meditation chick or meditation chick. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. So she was like, where do I start? I don't want to give too much information. It's going to be blah, blah, blah. like she's getting really excited. And she knows that, you know, I can relate to that wanting to give everything. And, mm-hmm. and I said, okay, where I've been with that lately is do what's easy easy is your, and she's splenic. So she's open emotion. I said, I don't know if this is right for everyone, but I would say at least it's right. If you have an open solar plexus, because the, the, the idea, the state of ease means that you're at least emotionally more in your, your home frequency zone. And so whatever's easy means the neutrino field has positioned you there and your expertise is going to show up there, but it's also what the people who are magnetized to it, what, you know, they they've been drawn to it too. They're going to more easily receive it. So just do what's easy and stop, <laughs> stop after it's easy. And she's like, Oh my God, you blew my mind. That's, that feels so right. And so, yeah. And it's, it's I literally, I'm literally thing. doing a program right now. We're only the one weekend and the name of it is easy intuition and meditation coaching. <laughs> wow. Like, Got to put easy right at the front for me as a keynote, but also because I want other people to be in it, in a state of ease with their own intuition. I mean, I feel like yeah. your intuition is only available to you if you're at a state, state of ease. You're a hundred percent, right? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, we could whole, have a whole splendid conversation yeah. about that but for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for, for saying that. And I think this is, I, a great place to complete. Everyone do please all of the things that Christy is offering. And I thank you so, so much for all of thank your you generosity. For having me. This was such a delightful conversation. So wonderful. The so delight fun. is all ours. And I love delight. Yeah. Delight's a keyword for me because it's another mm-hmm. way to say surprise. So right. <laughs> everyone, Christy Inge, what a pleasure. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so for- much. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that tour in the brilliance of that projector energy of Christy Inge. I had the best time. I'm sure you can tell. And I just, of course, once want, want to once more encourage you to check the show notes, to be able to see, to well, actually join Christy's newsletter. It is so uh, valuable. Uh, I, I do read it every time it comes in. And But I also want to invite you to, to also join my newsletter because that is the best way for us to stay in touch. You'll be the first one to hear about the programs that I have coming up because I do have coming in 2023, animal communication and multidimensional mediumship. And these are both if you are interested in doing it professionally, but also for anyone who is interested in enhancing their life, their spiritual journey through these wonderful spiritual arts that are so natural to us, but we, you know, using an incubator and an educator and to be in the space to actually practice and see these evidences come forth so you can utilize those tools moving forward. I want to make sure that you have access to that. You know about it. Newsletter is the best way, even though I'll be using, you know, Instagram and everything to talk about it too. I have a lot of things coming up. And once again, Christie's uh, human design map you got to get that because that tool is so valuable because the best way you can really embody the potential of your human design is by spending time with one piece at a time. And her map is, I think, a really great way to do that because you can continually go back to it and and spend time contemplating different parts of what is um, what is accurate, what is correct, what is, you know, your gift. So... 
I just had the best time with these two episodes. I hope you felt it as well. And I just appreciate you so much for being here. Thanks for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are. <laughs>